What's up, gamers? Nerds. Let's see what we have here. All right, we're going to play some Destiny 2 later today. But we've got some pretty big hype right now because Bungie is about to talk about the future of Destiny 2. Um, especially referring to the fact that the new season comes out today. So whatever that may be, whatever the big details are around that, uh, we'll find out today. I know they're talking overhauls of how they're going to do things, you know, reacting to maybe the past couple of months and seasons of, of content that, you know, people have felt largely wasn't worthwhile, you know, lots of just reskin this gun, change up this armor, have some event that we play for a month or so that rotates in all these armor and we grind for the rolls and stuff like that um hopefully we're seeing that go somewhere else and and you know just people that are just weary of stuff like the season pass type stuff uh just being kind of a cheap cash in and really making this game a job more than a hobby or something fun an exciting world to escape in so there's that. And uh, yes, we are still raising money for the Minnesota Freedom Fund. We are halfway uh, through that right now. So that's exciting. Crushing our goals here. And uh, we're just a week in uh, on our month-long fundraiser for the Minnesota Freedom Fund. And then after this month, I'll have to find another uh, relevant charity because... It's a very systemic problem. It's not really going to be solved in just, hey, <laughs> in a month. So, there we are with that. Anyway, this will be starting in about, maybe about 20 minutes or so. so I'm going to keep the bungee page here turned on. And we'll keep an eye on that for any appearances. But yeah, I am anticipating several things. Um, I think overall there's going to be a shift to... This is a prediction I've had since Destiny 1. But I think there's going to be a shift at some point where Guardians will not use just the light. They will use the darkness some way. And I always thought the cool way to do it would be like... You know, if you use darkness, it like saps away at your health or, or something like that or, or detracts from your super bar or whatever it may be. You know, sort of a reverse of the light, you know, some sort of negative effect from the darkness. Because we've, we've used guns, especially in Destiny 1, that utilized uh, sort of darkness type stuff. And uh, they would often sap away at your health. And I think that's like a really cool idea for that. So something like that uh, could possibly happen. Um, but really big things are like, you know, just changes to make quality of life better. Uh, you know, just changes to where like all the good gear isn't hidden behind Eververse. Um, just a sort of cycle with leveling up and the power grind and you know the the drip feed of content I understand uh, but maybe talking about better ways to deploy that and not making every season so samey uh, I really haven't felt like there's been any sort of grand movement other than since Shadowkeep really um, we've had some cool cutscenes since then, but that's about it. I, I can't really say that my Guardian, especially my Guardian, can't really say my Guardian's contributed at all. Uh, 
anything. So, yeah, and they'll, they'll probably talk about things that we're not excited about, you know, like uh, sunsetting weapons and stuff like that. But, you know, things that are necessary, right? And I'm hoping there's going to be some big announcements, you know, stuff we're not going to see coming. Um, I think at some point they're going to have to do a Black Lives Matter um, emblem, some sort of support, a pin, something like that. So wouldn't be surprised if that showed up today. But if it didn't, uh, that's probably just because it's not ready. That would just be because it's not ready. All right. I cut the music for right now. Um, while we get ready for the bungee stuff here, they might have some tunes playing. Yeah, it looks like they got a new going live scene. That's good. Uh, but thank you guys for being here. We're going to do sort of a live coverage of Whatever Bungie reveals, we'll react to it, discuss it, and um, hopefully uh, we'll be able to jump into the game right after. Um, I'm hoping servers are prepared for an influx. If they're, you know, announcing something big right now, people are going to want to get on and play, and then hopefully that doesn't overload the servers or something like that. That would be a disaster. Um, but yeah, we're looking at a new uh, location, probably a new moon. I'm guessing probably Europa. Um, the Drifter is probably leading this excursion, which means trouble. And that's why I think it might finally be the time where we do something with the darkness, where we dabble with it uh, for once. Which could be exciting, because there... There was that one season a while back where they made us make choices, you know? And that was really cool. And we just never really saw... They were like, Re remember, this will have consequences down the line, season of the Drifter. And uh, we never really... Like, never really felt like that did anything. Maybe it's to be revealed, but... Uh, you know, either you sided with the Drifter or you didn't. And so it was like... You know, it felt like we were picking a side in, in the war. So, interesting. But yeah, Bungie has been out there protesting uh, part of the Black Lives Matter movement and with their headquarters being in Seattle, um, seeing uh, these employees of Bungie out there doing that, it, it means a lot when you're playing the game and you understand how much the world thrives on inclusion, they've got the pride pin and all these things like that. And so, you know, you're, you're just seeing that it's not just a front, it's not just emblems, it's not just about inclusion within the game. You know, they are very much people that are... It's a human rights issue. It's not even a, a political thing. So it, it shouldn't harm their reputation or anything but i mean i know there's going to be people that are going to be very uh against stuff like that but who cares we're all for it we're raising money for the minnesota freedom fund uh latest word out of minneapolis is that they're moving to disband their police force and and build it from the ground up and and sort of go with something that's more focused on public health, public safety, rather than having police handling literally a multitude of different things that are not associated with crime and trying to solve those issues with guns, of course, is disastrous. Um, so yeah, it's a systemic issue. and It's, it's going to require a, a, a massive dismantling, um, whether that's uh, something people like or not. You know, it's going to gonna have to be a big change. 
Um, also, Deej uh, tweeted this. If you guys saw this, uh, let me let me pull up the tweet here. Deej. Let me see. Yeah. Uh, Attention citizens of Twitch, our video game has awesome music in it, and you are welcome to use it on your streams. We grant permission to creators of all varieties to use our content to make your content so long as you add your own voice. This is not news, by the way. This has been rule and law since the reveal of Destiny in 2013. We have a long history of sharing our content with people who help us build strong communities. So go nuts. Um, so yeah, they, they support the efforts of the community to produce non-commercial content using video images, footage, music, sounds, dialogue, and other assets from our games, subject to a few conditions. Creations can freely shared with other players in places like Bungie.net creations page in the event that creators seek profit from their work following guidelines apply and then they they get into that you know so they obviously don't want people selling like unlicensed uh stuff and making profits off of that um not a fan of that so they don't they don't want you selling things uh within reason Uh, Deej, yep. Um, what's up, a raging girl? What's up, Glenn? Uh, yeah, I was just kind of commenting on this. Let me drop the the link in chat to the tweet, but I did throw it in Discord as well. Um, yeah, I've I've noticed a lot of people actually have used Destiny music, myself included, uh, throughout all this. And just good that they're not, um, it's good that they're not, uh, punishing people, I suppose, but, uh, I wouldn't blame them for protecting their intellectual property, but it's really cool to see that they're open with that. Um, this is going to be a lot different. I think, I think it's going to be more along the video type stuff by doc or vid doc I think we said it's vid doc video vid by documentary vid doc something like that yeah so we got big big destiny news today and I'm I'm seeing because Dweej Dweej Deej is uh sharing pictures of his setup as well and his multi-screens and stuff like that um that they're going to have conversations you know probably a, a zoom call with multiple people open uh and chatting about the future of destiny while you know showcasing some gameplay and talking about the future of the game i think it's more along a vid doc than you know just dropping a trailer or some 30 second spot because also you know the new season starts today so it's like they gotta kind of hype up the new season we gotta kind of talk about how the almighty just crashed over the weekend you know we we zapped it with rasputin and it crashed on the earth and what does that mean and all the rasputin towers are up on earth and everywhere and you know, what, what are the consequences of our actions? And, you know, the darkness is getting closer. closer. The drifter is flying out to Europa to do something, maybe. Uh, you know, we see the darkness creeping around Jupiter. Um, yeah, so there's a lot going on. But yeah, they purposely titled this, you know, the future of Destiny 2. So it's, it's definitely not going to be just a trailer.
I'm hoping that we'll be able to hop in straight away. Hopefully there's no uh, server downtime or uh, any maintenance, stuff like that to do. I would like to. I'd like to have a peek around. Oh, here we go. Let's let's switch over. I always like this screen. Makes me feel old. I've been playing this game since 2014. Yeah, absolutely, dude. We'll get some games in. The Taken King, 9-15-15. Oh my god, that was five years ago? King's Fall, that was day before my birthday. I was 25 years old. Technically, uh, maybe 24. Rise of Iron, September 20th. It, it, day after my birthday, they're, they're like, you know. Stuff was, look, even Wrath of the Machine, like everything was launching around my birthday. <laughs> September 19th, just always something was, yeah. Look at that, month of September is, is go time for Destiny. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know, Potter. I don't know. Uh, Destiny 1 and 2, my all-time favorite games. I think the the reason I like Destiny so much is that, is the, to me, it is the ultimate co-op game. It's just the best game to play with your friends. We can all just log in. We all got our different gear, our different powers and stuff like that, and our different approaches and stuff, and... You know, it just doesn't get old to me. Um, there's things I dislike about the games at times, but... And also just the feel of the game. Uh, as far as FPSs go, I think Destiny has the best feel of any FPS ever made. And... It's certainly difficult to be away from all the folks that you work with day to day. You know, that's kind of like a family. This is a company that talks about its people first. It talks about values. It talks about really, really caring. That is true. Hell yeah. When you look at the the number of things we really oh, yeah, maybe. accomplish in a pretty short period of time, it's it's a testament to it's it's an enduring title that I always come back to. How about that, Potter? The first case of a new potentially deadly virus has been confirmed in the United States, and it's right in our own backyard. Given the explosion of the COVID-19 virus in our state and globally, I will sign a statewide executive proclamation later today, temporarily shutting down restaurants, bars, entertainment, and recreational facilities. Well, it really started for us back in February when we were starting to hear early stages about the global pandemic. We went from, first time I'd ever heard the phrase social distancing before, to the entire studio working from home in a matter of a couple of weeks. Yikes. It was scary. It was kind of chaotic, a lot of uncertainty. We had to rise to this challenge. And no, no, they're talking the about the future today, today, actually. To working distributed all over um, the Puget Sound region. We so the future of Destiny 2, we have a new season dropping today, so I, I don't think they're so going to say anything like that. But yeah, I think things are going to deploy so slower due to COVID. The day -to -day Their reactions have been slower to multiplayer. So Maybe. Maybe no, so far they could. Been very clear. Something that's very particular about Destiny is that we do work on Bungie machines to make sure that we keep certain aspects of Destiny secure. And so in order to do that, we had to look at provisioning up to 400 laptops, which was a huge number for us. We have artists, we have designers, we have huh. writers, we have engineers, testers. There's so look many at, different- Look at how hard they're working though. Technology. It's done. Background here, got a little uh, microphone. Friggin' Lance Reddick yeah. recording yeah. in his yeah. closet. Yeah. I saw that. I saw that tweet. Oh, it was so good. He was recording in his own closet, man. Oh, what a legend. Workload for a month is between seven and eight hundred tickets, and in March it was fourteen hundred tickets. 
The IT team was incredible through this. I mean, it was one of those moments where uh, a team that's, you know, often behind the scenes suddenly came front and center. Our guys, they're willing to stay all through the night and not a complaint out of a single guy. I mean, it's the best team I've ever worked with and I could not be prouder to stand by their sides. You got it. <laughs> As we started to get in a position where we were operational day to day, we oh my asked gosh. Ourselves, what can we do locally? The Bungie Foundation has been really busy, hard at work, and we wanted to make sure that our families, especially the most vulnerable families in our community, would be able to be taken care of in that time. So we asked ourselves, well, what can we do for kids in the area? So we, we actually partnered no with way. the Boys and Girls Club in the area to help provide food for kids who were no longer going to school. They are serving <laughs> about 500 meals per day. And at this point, since since the middle of March, that actually equates to about 30,000 meals that they provided. It's for so emo, what do you mean? <laughs> Wearing black. Thank you. Thank you. It's incredible stuff, but being Through able them. to use our infrastructure to support that. And then, of course, the huge effort with direct relief. We partnered with Direct Relief, and we wanted to find a way to support those wow. who have been probably some of the most hardest. In 95! Which are our frontline healthcare workers. So we spun up a month-long fundraiser, and we set a goal of $700,000 to be raised in that period of time. And we've already reached our goal, which is really exciting. Wow. One thing that's really become clear to me is how much we're all driven by that mission of we create worlds that inspire friendship. And I think it also says something about how much everyone cares about each other here. The fact that they are willing to put their money where That's the other thing. Some of my best friends like have been made. That work for the studio. Best friendships have been Bungie created I look at the by playing Destiny together. Whether we're raiding, off, we're, bills, we're doing strikes, we're playing Crucible, whatever it is. Each we're, one of us. I mean, that's where some of the all that great camaraderie comes from I had the great privilege is us working together awesome team this awesome playing this game I, the people I've met so all over the world I mean the thing that I've learned you just don't get that in other right other games health, other communities uh, a rippling effect. because this is a game that, game that we all come back to over the years Jax welcome to the stream So I'm I'm expecting a lot of hype here, a lot of reason to want to play the game. Oof, the Seraph Bunker started in March. So yeah, that's I haven't really played much since March. Even before then. Cuz the game really started to become a job. It wasn't fun anymore uh trying to keep up, trying to add the best stuff, whatever it is. Oh, it is called Season of Arrivals. Okay. That leaked uh, last night and people kept saying, it's not true, it's not true. Oh crap. So, the darkness is arriving. Oh, this is bad. Yeah, they, they've done this in the past for sure. To hype things up and of course, in the fall, there's usually a major content drop. So, you know, it's not unusual for us to get videos like this where they you know, get into some detail and really get us hyped up for the future of the game. Especially, you know, if things are mediocre or bad, you know, they're they're talking about overhauls and stuff like that. So, 20 seconds here. Uh, but yeah. Uh, Janie Bear, welcome to the stream. How are you? Welcome. <laughs> Another rainy, dreary day. Glad to be indoors. Oh, dude, love it. Love it, man. Well, I'm glad you're doing well. Hope you're enjoying your time at home. Let's see what we got here. What? Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> I thought it was a countdown timer. Yeah, absolutely. Oh. They did it. Okay. And you gotta love Bungie. They've been out here actually. Um, pro I, I was mentioning this earlier. They have been out in Seattle protesting uh, the Black Lives Matter movement. Uh, they've been in support of the cause. Um, and they're out there, you know, getting tear gassed and stuff like that. Uh, it's just wild. 
yeah. All these all these statements. Yeah. So here's here's my other prediction. I said this earlier as well, but I'll I'll kind of echo some of the stuff again. Um I I feel like there will be an emblem, uh pin, uh various stuff in game with maybe, you know, either something you can purchase. You know, they've done this with the pride pin. You could purchase the pride pin. You got an in-game emblem and stuff like that. Um, something similar for Black Lives Matter. I think it's it's either in the works or it's going to be revealed today. Um, and that'll be sold out like instantly because the community just instantly rallied around the, the pride pin. And uh, I, I got one too. So yeah, there's their links. Okay, good stuff. Um, another prediction I have is that the darkness will be a power that we can harness, uh, potentially something that is detrimental to our guardian, uh, either to his health or something like that. And, you know, you'd have to juggle that with, you know, great power comes, you know, danger. You know, there have been guns in, uh, especially in Destiny 1, there was a weapon that would allow you to continue shooting without reloading, but it would eventually eat into your health. So, seeing stuff like that, maybe new supers revealed, stuff like that, new subclasses uh, oriented around darkness. It might not be that that is coming out this season, but it might be something that's alluded to uh, in the future of Destiny. And as far as the season, I think, I think we're going to be real up close and personal with the darkness. Sign up, donate, organize, and mobilize. The words of Killer Mike. Good stuff. I'm glad they did this. I think this is important. I, I thought it was another countdown timer, and it kind of is, but this, this is important. I, I support this, 100%. Let's, let's see. No, no, let's not see. Let's not see. We don't need to see how Twitch chat's reacting. We don't need it. Nope. It's not going to be good. It's not going to not gonna make you feel all warm and fuzzy inside. Someone's going to be like, Damn it! Another countdown timer! God! It's just... It's important to understand the... I feel like we're all old enough to understand how long nine minutes is, but I think it's important that they're putting that in perspective here. And a lot of TV commercials are, are taking the same approach uh, with, you know, raising awareness to this. I mean... I don't know. But once again, as I said, we're raising uh, money for the Minnesota Freedom Fund. Uh, you can type exclamation charity in chat for details, exclamation incentives uh, for the incentives that are uh, redeemed from your donations. I'll do all sorts of fun stuff, sing and speak in my funny voices and stuff. We've been reading excerpts of Romeo and Juliet uh, using some of my voice acting, uh, I don't know, repertoire, four minutes, but yeah, I'm thinking, uh, you know, big new gun to chase, new exotic for the season, um, hopefully some new gear that looks good, uh, hopefully not repetitive, uh, grindy, reskinned, uh, stuff, you know, we're we're really looking for seasons that are different than just copy and pasting some type of menagerie type thing, grinding for rolls. I'm kind of over the grinding for rolls, especially if they're going to start sunsetting weapons. I'm just going to, you know, if I get that good roll, great. If I don't, I'm not going to sit here and just grind the same event over and over trying to get a good roll because a year from now it's not going to mean anything. All that time wasted in the game is going to be meaningless. So I'm being very intentional about my time spent in the game. 
I'm not doing 12 hour days of Destiny anymore. Um, I'm playing other games where what I'm doing now is I'm chasing experiences. This has been my thing. I'm chasing experiences that end is, is my thing. So I'm playing lots of single player games, other games I missed out on. I'm going back and replaying games that I really enjoy that I haven't played in years because there's been a constant flow of new games to play all the time. Um, so just doing all that, uh, when I do make my way back around to Destiny, The Division, stuff like that, um, with these games that never end, I'm, I'm coming back around. And it feel, it's less stressful, it's less fatiguing and nauseating and all, of, all the many things, stuff like that. Everyone's red. Yeah, what's going on, guys? Are you, you mad about something? You got all this red in chat? <laughs> we, yeah, we did a lot of... I, I'm pretty sure there was like maybe a whole year or so where I was waking up at 10 a.m. streaming until 6, 7 p.m., 10 p.m., you know, just clocking like full uh, you know, 12 hour days or more, maybe with a dinner break and then just clocking in until three or four in the morning, just playing Destiny like all the time. And that's because it was really good and there was always something to chase after, but it, it was also incredibly draining. And I just, looking back, I'm like, not all that time was worth the uh, investment in the pain and suffering. So now I, I'm very much uh, more relaxed, more casual, which I know is kind of a dirty word. If you know, if you're a casual gamer, that means you're you're inexperienced, you're a weekend warrior, you're blah blah blah, whatever. I'm a Destiny veteran. I know how to play the freaking game. You know, like just because I'm not playing it. 72 hours a day doesn't mean I'm any less than the jerks that sit there, you know, and just don't even breathe. They just keep playing and they're eating their food at their desk and crumbs in their keyboard and they don't sleep. And, I, you know, like, come on, man. I'm going to have a little bit of a life here, some, some sort. <laughs> what it, what did it cost? Everything! <laughs> What's up, Relic? How's it going? Here we go. No, oh, there's a lot of fun things. There's, there's a lot of stuff. There's always something to do. Pre-recorded interview footage. I'm Mark Northworthy. I'm the Destiny 2 uh, general manager. And I'm Luke Smith, and I'm the Destiny 2 game director. Before we started the show today, we wanted to just acknowledge the circumstances and the unprecedented times we're in. Um, this is not how we had planned this several months ago uh, to talk about the future of Destiny 2 and, and, and reveal where we're headed okay. with, with the team. Um, you know, this, this show's not how we planned it. We're building the game, not how we planned it, from our living rooms and, you know, basements and with our kids and our dogs and all sorts of stuff on our laps while uh while we're trying to make this game yeah the uh this is this, there's like a there's like an inherent weirdness to this even the weirdness of you know this is the first time i've seen you in person for in the last like probably three months and i don't know if people know but outside of the show that is work like those are actually pretty close like we hang out we talk all the time our our significant others are buddies like uh and so yeah, this is it's like it's super weird just to see you in person. Yeah, not on yeah. a screen. Yeah, not on yeah. this little like zoom screen on an iPad or something. Like it's just it's just totally bizarre. Yeah. Um, this is not how we envisioned this and certainly our hope was that it would be more than just us two talking about this stuff. Um, and over the course of the summer, we'll, a bunch more folks from the team are going to are going to talk about what we're what we're up to and what we're going to be up to. Let's get the show started. Oh. Jupiter. New destination.
Wait. Okay, that was a very quick flash. I didn't see what gun that was. Eris Morn! What is going on here? The Drifter! Yeah, this is all new stuff. A stranger! A stranger! This is what I brought you here to see. Where has she freaking been since Destiny 1? I've been saying it for years now. It's like, where is she? Beyond Light, September 22nd. Three days after my birthday. So once again, another, another big gift for me. So, uh... Luke, is it finally time to explain? Ugh. You know, listen, like some jerk said that the st we were done with the stranger story. And as you get back into Destiny and you keep like looking around and finding stones to uncover, a character who says that she's not forged in light and where the two of you meet, ground can break, becomes a pretty interesting tool to, to leverage here in uh, Destiny mm. on light and going forward. You know, it is I'm excited. Of a brand That's new good era. stuff, right? To. This fall, you're going to discover Europa, a brand new destination, and... One of the first destinations we envisioned long ago when Destiny began. This Europa. is the birthplace of the Exo and the site of a newly active pyramid ship. As a player, you're going to face Aramis, a fallen warrior wielding a brand new power born from a very ancient darkness. Like you, Aramis is a leader. But unlike you, she seeks revenge against the Traveler for scattering her people's once great houses to the cosmic winds. It's up to you to confront Aramis and her growing empire. Well, you, well, you can't. We can't go to Jupiter. It's to go like it's it's literally a gas giant. Surface. Like it's not. Lost the time, like the deep stone crypt. Yes. Even yeah, with all the sci-fi stuff, yeah. like it's not possible to, to go to Jupiter. Like and it's just there. So it, it makes sense that we're going to Where I come from, a moon. I have witnessed this firsthand. I refuse mm. to let it happen again. Three alpha footage. It's a hostile, very hostile plant. Like the storms are constant. I think Venus was different though. This is a truth. Because Venus was partially terraformed. And so we must but I mean, Jupiter is like... It's uninhabitable in every sense. And even though these games are science fiction, they're somewhat based in some semblance of reality. And dark is so very thin. Let's cross it together. Goodness. So like I said, new new stuff. Wielding. Oh, I told you. See, I've been saying it for years. And now it's coming true. Wield the darkness, baby. I'm here. I will give these guardians. And that looks like ice. Looks like we're doing stuff with ice. been saying it for years that they were going to do man it's time to wield the darkness the thing we've been waiting destiny 2 beyond light ships to all currently supported platforms on september 22nd this year and it kicks Yikes. off a new era in destiny where players will discover the true nature of the light and the dark not just walking the thin line between 
but wielding the darkness itself as a weapon with stasis. And we did just get like a very brief look at that today. And, you know, obviously we're going to end up showing more throughout the course of the summer. And the other thing is stasis, this new power, isn't just going to be guardian supers and abilities. It's a brand new damage type. So that means it's going to ultimately sit alongside solar, arc, and... Oh, Vulcan. no. First new element we've introduced. So it's a new it's element a even. Way back in 2014. This is a big deal. Like, it's a big so deal. Kinetic, to the kinetic, solar, arc, kind of void. <laughs> Boom. Today, yeah, you got a glimpse of this this new power. Fifth, it's, it's fifth element. The pursuit and acquisition and, and the player's ability to wield it. Fifth element. Something that's going to be woven in through the narrative of the game. Fifth the element. The game is kind of a collision course between you and, and Aramis. And uh, we're going to show you a bunch more about Shit stasis cold. later in the year. <laughs> because though we're excited about what we're delivering this fall, we did say that Destiny 2 Beyond Light was the beginning of a new era. What does that mean? Well, it, it means that we're thinking about Destiny beyond just any given year and thinking about it over time. And so we want to take a look into kind of the long future of Destiny. But when you want to look ahead, like we're about to do, it all starts back at the beginning. Uh-oh. What does that mean? Why are we looking back, guys? We called it the Traveler. Uh. Its arrival changed us forever. All oh, that first moment up, in Destiny One. You must push back the darkness. Guardians are fighting on Earth and beyond. Join them. There's the stranger giving us her rifle. Went down into the pit. To fight Crota. In the end. The dark below. Oh, dude. Chills. We have murdered his son. And now the Taken King comes for us all. Taken King. What are they saying? Why are they showing us this? What does that mean? Are they about to tease something big here? We thought we were indestructible. Oh, when we became an Iron Lord. You've merely forgotten the fear of death. Oh, and then Gaul took over in Destiny 2. Guardians anymore? Oh, and then they killed Cade. We should have been there. Any last words? I'm coming home. Yes. So, this is to be a reckoning. Wow. Yeah, those new supers that came in with Forsaken. And then Shadow Keep in 2019. I don't think they're gonna ever res Cade unless uh, Nathan Fillion's schedule changes, but he's currently acting in the show The Rookie, so. I think that was one of the big reasons why they removed the character. Oh, when we met the darkness. The line between light and dark is so very thin. Matt Mercer. Beyond light. Okay. Do you know which side you're on? That is the darkness. The Witch Queen in 2021. Mm. 2022. Destiny 2 Lightfall working title. We are building Destiny's future today, right inside of Destiny 2. 
it starts with Beyond Light coming this fall. It's going to continue with the next major expansion, The Witch Queen, and Lightfall is going to kind of drive this all to a, uh, to a moment. These three releases represent this new era in Destiny. These eras began really in 2014 with that era of light where you know players entered Destiny for the first time. They were resurrected. They went to the tower. They learned about uh, the things the children were scared of. And you huh. know, the children are scared. Era, uh, when we became Guardians. Yeah, they announced now, uh, when Shadow Keep came out that they are going full embracing the MMO of the game. Of it used to be a dirty word. It's not clear. We are all in. On Destiny 2. There's Last more RPG elements the game that in the game. Build the definitive action MMO. Place it in an awesome evolving world that you can you just set it anywhere with your friends. We are still completely committed to this ambitious vision. Luke Smith here. We're going to continue reaching to deliver it in Destiny 2. And to be clear, listen, I'm sure like over here in the Twitch chat, there's like you know some mix of salt and space dad. Mm. You know, we haven't space got dad. everything right out of the gate. You know, for example, we've already begun working on changes that we're going to make to our seasonal model in year four to get a bunch of the FOMO that's in the game right now out of it. And this is a response not only to your feedback, but just, you know, we took it in the wrong direction. You can, you can lay that at me. We're also working on things like transmog, and that's going to be... Transmog! That means armor is kind of always valuable to you because it can always represent a look for you to chase. And we've got a bunch of other improvements to the experience that we're working on. Things like the quest lock is going to get like another awesome revision. We've got like small touches, like a off requested one. Quest I, log. I think when we started Beyond Light, uh, this was one that uh, I made to my exact. And in, in, you know the uh... yeah, getting a dark title screen <laughs> back in Destiny so that the light white heat of the title screen doesn't light up your entire apartment at 2 a.m. So there are the small features, but then there's also some big features and maybe one of the biggest is next generation support i think one of the most exciting things we're going to talk about is the game's going to run at 60 frames per second and 4k resolution on the new hardware we're also really happy to say that whatever out freaking time or will own in destiny 2 will come with you to your next generation console of choice at no extra charge on yeah. playstation you'll be able to upgrade to playstation 5 for free and on xbox we will support smart delivery also for free. In plain English, this means if you own Destiny 2 expansion content on those platforms now or in the future or by Beyond Light in September, you can keep playing on the same family consoles for free without buying the expansions again. We think that's going to be awesome. About time. And you don't have to worry about busting up your friends list either because we're going to support intergenerational crossplay within each console platform ecosystem as well. This what? Means that if you or your brother's playing on PS4 and your sister's playing on PS5, all three of you can play together. And we're going to do mm. the same thing in the Xbox ecosystem. This year, we're focused on wow. intergenerational play. Hopefully next year, we can finally do the thing and get them all playing together in the same ecosystem. Yes. Then after that, it's, it's cool. cross-play across and all things. And enhanced it. And so we, wow. we brought a destination out of the vault and you know spruced it up, and that's where you got to play. We're not doing that with this fall's destination, Europa. It's a brand new place you've never been before. And both the Witch Queen and Lightfall are going to also include brand new, never before seen destinations. That's good. These expansions will stretch out across a timeline that's going to bring much anticipated enemies to the forefront and hopefully deliver some twists, turns, drama that uh, we don't think anyone's going to see coming. But to deliver these big content beats each and every year, and keep building on top of our seasonal experiences while making technological leaps forward, we also need to make some big changes to the way we treat some of our older legacy content. The stuff that maybe is getting a little long in the tooth that you're not really looking at and playing anymore. You're like not. De really Destiny, <laughs> Destiny 2 is a huge game. We have nine destinations, 40 story missions, 54 adventures, 42 lost sectors, 17 strikes, 31 PvP maps, 7 raids and hundreds of game systems that layer on top of that. I could go on, and I've probably screwed up one uh -oh. of the answers. The fact is, the game is too large to efficiently update and maintain. We're on track to be like 115 gigabytes uh -oh. on PlayStation alone, and our updates to the game are huge, and we're starting to reach the limits of our ability to patch. We uh -oh. don't want to start over from scratch and build a sequel. 
And in order to make a sequel, we would have to stop supporting Destiny 2. Like, it would effectively go dark. You know, we talk about a single evolving world. A single evolving world. Not multiple evolving worlds, but a <laughs> single evolving world. And, and we don't want people to have to start over. We don't want to have that loss of continuity with our game systems and our communities and all the players together. We don't want to put another number on the box. So instead... We're taking it away. Each year, just as a new expansion comes out, we're going to cycle older, less actively played activity and destination content out of the live game and into what we're calling the Destiny Content Vault, the DCV. <laughs> Moving content into this vault is going to allow us to add support for D2 for years, including Beyond Light, the Witch Queen, and Lightfall. This vault is also going to allow us to take content from Destiny 1, do some work on it, get it ready to no come way. into the Destiny 2 ecosystem. So we're not just going to be taking stuff away. We're also going to be no way the classic vault and kind of bringing some stuff back or unvaulting activity no way. And destination content each year. Thinking about the greatest hits of Destiny. Right? Oh, no There's way. Tracks we can lay down. Vault of Glass. Past that was like pretty cool that could be made even better if it existed today. Venus. What, is, what does that look like? Yeah, there's a lot of stuff that people... There's a lot of awesome stuff that the team has built over the, you know, six years. Bring back Russia. Destiny and that Destiny 2 players totally have missed out on. Like, later this year, Destiny 1's Cosmodrome is coming back this fall as a selectable destination. If three strikes are also going to come back during Season 12 and Season 13. And part of the awesome thing here is a bunch of players haven't played Sepix. Sepix was Zepix. the strike from the beta way Zepix back Prime. in summer 2014. It, yep. It like... That was the beta. The definitive, the definitive, like, original strike that yeah. we felt, like, hit the right notes. Yep. Yeah. One of the best one, right? I mean, uh, compositions, the too. The like, music do was again. incredible. Well, let's do that again, but let's also reach into the past and, like, bring it into the present. That's There's so cool. great content in our past, and maybe this year we'll see a, a classic raid come back. I think it'd be pretty amazing this year to see the Vault of Glass kind of unvaulted. About time. Players. Like, I can imagine Hell yeah. Things, like champion Praetorians instead of just regular Praetorians and kind of updating it slightly to the modern context uh, but still preserving all the glass the would be so freaking awesome so not only are we going to be bringing back Cosmodrome and adding Europa but we're going to look at some of that content that's been in the game for a long time that's been free that isn't actively played and that's that's when some of that is going to be vaulted well after the show we're going to have a much more in-depth article that you can read in our plans for for vaulting content on Bungie.net and why we're taking yeah. this I want to know about that. Approach and what it means for the game this year and for the game going forward. Vaulted. We're also going to be conducting a bunch of interviews to answer your big questions, and we will continue the conversation with coverage in our ongoing This Week at Bungie community conversations, as well as there will be a bunch of player support and DPS articles about this all summer long. You know, we've, we've placed a bunch of bets on the Destiny Cosmic Board, whether it's the Traveler waking up, whether it's the Stranger dissolving like we're telling you, you know, there's there's so much more to explore out there. And so we're going to start to bring a bunch of these threads home. Yeah, Cosmodrome coming Here's back, that's pretty the, cool. The beginning of those threads coming home to roost this summer in Season of Arrivals. Huh. All right, that's what happened over the weekend. And with allies like Rasputin, who can stop us? From Titan to Mercury, their shadow reaches. Is their message a warning? A trick? We can't know until we hear their words for ourselves. Yikes. Bring weapons. You will not need them. Offer only truth. The darkness reached out, but something interferes. The witch sister of the Taken King, Savathun. Savathun! Oh, a new dungeon? Yes! We need a dungeon! We are the final line that holds the second collapse. Ooh. Ooh! All oh, those guns look nasty. The road to ruin, exotic quest. Oh, disgusting. This battle is not over. 
Okay, so that's the new season today. Yeah. Sweet! So that's the season of Arrivals, and it starts any minute now at 10 a.m. Pacific. So today, we looked at a bunch of stuff. We talked about the Destiny content vault. We looked Ooh. into the past to see kind of... Yeah, those guns look like they had like a Taken we look to it. With the Witch Queen sort of darkness and, coming uh, out of it. And we also talked about Beyond Light, which is the beginning of a new era in Destiny 2. And if pre-ordering is kind of your thing, like the pre-orders are going to go live today. Like if you're, if you're interested, there's some, there's some sweet bonuses. And, uh, you know, that's... That's kind of the the summary of the show. Uh, where and you're if you're excited about the start of Beyond Light and where we're headed, well, the season arrivals. We just it's kind of like a prelude, you know. It's it's really setting up that story, and so we encourage you to get in and play. There's one more thing I totally forgot. Uh, so today at 5 p.m. Pacific, we're going to launch a brand new dungeon called Prophecy. Uh, Prophecy is a dungeon that involves the nine, and that's kind of like all I'm going to say about it. Because there's there's a little bit of business uh, to get to with it, and then uh, we'll 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 wrap. But it's got a brand new set of armor for you to chase. It's got some some classic armor for you to chase. Dungeon. It's gonna be at a really high power level, which means it's like a, a solid day's work plus a little bit of skill to to summit that mountain. It's free for all players. It's free for all players, and we're gonna show you a trailer in just a second. If you don't want to see anything from the dungeon, just click the little red X or like get up and go. Have a make an omelet and then come back and the stream will be over and you can play uh, you can play Season of Arrivals in Destiny 2. And I think that's the business. Uh, I don't know if I want to see it now. We've handled yeah. everything. I think he brings up a good point. Thank you all for tuning in and giving us your time today, and just for playing Destiny and, and, and being part of this amazing community. It has and it will continue to be a journey. On behalf of everyone at Bungie, please, 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 stay safe out there and you know. We'll see you soon. I don't know if I want to see. Hmm. Ah. Uh, see, the dungeons are where they just run wild. Just some of the best content. I think even better than raids, I like the dungeons. Yeah. Yeah. No, this is this is bread and butter right here. This is to me, this is where Destiny is at its best right now. It's the dungeons. Whether it's puzzles, it's platforming, it's you know, gameplay elements, there's difficult bosses, teamwork. Ugh. It's cool. Foundry armor, okay. Daito. Wow. Okay, Ryder. <laughs> Ryder's done. Um, Destiny the game. Destiny the game. Uh, dot com. Which Prime rewards? Mm, that's the stream. Would it be in the store? No. Okay, maybe, yeah, maybe the new stuff is not up yet. So that's hype. Um, so crossplay, intergenerational crossplay for now. So, okay, Spaden. Oh man, you showed up right at the end. Um, so intergenerational crossplay. PS4 people can play on PS5 together in that ecosystem. Everything transfers over, no rebuying stuff. Um, 
Same with Xbox, Xbox One, Two, Xbox Series X. You know, there's no additional purchasing, um, and there's cross intergenerational play there. And then, the, like they're saying, next year they're thinking full cross play with consoles and PC. That means we're getting 60 frames a second, 4K across the board with the new consoles and PC. Uh, cycling out content, putting it in the Destiny Vault and bringing out old content from the Destiny Vault and modernizing that in Destiny 2, meaning the Cosmodrome coming back to Destiny 2, Vault of Glass raid from Destiny 1, maybe eventually coming to Destiny 2. Uh, we've got new seasonal content that we're going to check out here in a bit today. Uh, that'll be uh, here in about 20 minutes. So yeah, uh, good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah, a lot of news, honestly, for for this time period here. Uh, a new dungeon uh, that we'll be able to play today, uh, but they did say it was going to be higher power level, so that, to me, uh, kind of means <laughs> that I'm, not, I'm probably not going to be able to play it today. But we'll see. Do, do, do. Nope, let's quit on that. Um, season no, no, can't do that. Okay. Mystery PC move rewards. Okay. Yeah, everything's down for maintenance. It's going to be 3 to 4 a.m. for you. Yeah. Um, yeah, and they're, they're planning out content. Uh, we're headed to Europa. That's going to be exciting. Um... I sleep now I can wake up earlier that's funny yeah um seeing all this stuff is really exciting uh it's understandable that they're cycling out the old content Gambit Prime can leave. That's what I'm wondering is, uh, is, is, will, does Gambit Prime, and its armor was really cool when it first came out. And I really liked, you know, collecting all the gear and the guns. And Reckoning was really cool, but unless you were playing with friends, Reckoning was really hard. And grinding to get that gear was a pain. And then when the power grind cycles around again... Um... All that gear is useless. And, you know, Armor 2.0 came out. And so it was like, okay, now now you basically have to regrind all the, all the Reckoning gear. And does anybody want to do that? No. <laughs> so I feel like if, if Gambit Prime Reckoning goes, I think Black Armory is probably going to go, sadly. Um, I think Black Armory would be cycled out. Um, 
I wonder what they're going to do with planets and moons and stuff, if any of those will cycle out. Lesser used ones, you know, Mercury doesn't have a lot of content, not a lot of great content. Titan is one of my favorite locations in the game, but it's very underutilized, and I understand that, and I, I get that a lot of people were thinking that Titan was going to get nuked by the Almighty or Rasputin or somebody who was, you know, going to nuke a planet recently. Um, yeah, just horrible. Uh, but yeah, you know, Cosmodrome coming back means, you know, that's a big open world area. So that's, that's going to be, and, and they might even add to the Cosmodrome. They might even add on to it and who knows, they might have the area, the SIVA infested area of the Cosmodrome might still be there hopefully um it's gonna be really cool so yeah thinking about that reckoning Gambit Prime. E even Gambit kind of needs, like, another look, you know? At, like... Because, to me, it's just lost its... Shimmer. There's really... Some of the Gambit guns are incredible. And some of the guns in Gambit Prime and Reckoning are some of the best guns in the game. And some of them are very underrated. Um, but the grind to get them is atrocious. And the mode is sometimes just plagued with quitters and, and you know, PvP, you know, just nerds. You know, they're just like, why don't you just go play PvP if you're so intent on invading? Like, you know, if that's like your only function in life, you know. It's like, be focused on the game. And, and the game mode and the objectives. And it's the same when you're playing Control in the Crucible. You know, there's people that are um, not focused on the objective. They're like, no, I want to kill people. Um, so there's that. Um, but as for other content that they could probably cycle out. Uh, I don't know. I, I feel like those are the main culprits. Like. Gambit Prime, Reckoning, maybe Mercury, um, Titan doesn't have a lot going on, Io to me just feels like a planet that I just never feel excited to go to, or, or Moon, sorry, Moon, um, so it's gonna be interesting seeing Europa and how that works, and the difference uh, between Europa and the iced over areas of Mars. Hopefully there's a bit of a difference there that it doesn't feel samey or it doesn't feel like we've been there before. Stuff like that. So there's a lot to be excited about. So hang on, let's, uh, hang on. Let's see if we can, uh, while we got some time here, let's see if we can dissect. What's going on here? Let me, uh, destiny two. Yeah, let's see. That's the reveal. Beyond light. Um, It's not what we want. Um, let's see. Bungie. Okay. Let's see if Bungie has... Yeah, gameplay. That's what I wanted to pull up. Okay, here we go. 
Okay, let me find the area in question here. Here's your first look at gameplay from Destiny 2 Beyond Light. Yeah, let's let's do some pausing and some Okay. This is pre alpha footage that we saw a minute ago. I refuse to let it happen again. Okay, so fallen stuff, uh Vex, um People or ex yeah, these are exos, right. Yeah, these are Hmm. This looks like it's in the Titan Arcology, but I could be wrong. But it definitely has that vibe. It's time the truth presented. Uh did itself to you. Yeah, so a lot of vex. Mm, t uh, like vex terraforming type stuff going on resides within beckoning you this is a truth we cannot hide from and so we must embrace it the darkness arriving vex or not vex um <laughs> fallen mech <laughs> and so we essentially coming it. down here boom it's kind of cool Trials looking stuff there. That looks like Siva. Hang on. Is that like Siva type stuff under the eyes? I really don't want to. The frame by frame is so. Uh, maybe. I don't know. It's hard to make an assessment there. Uh, and then here. That looks like a servitor that's like darkness. I don't know. It's weird how they're showing this new darkness power. It looks like ice or like glass. The line between light and dark is so very thin. Yeah, look at that. Isn't that such a cool effect? It reminds me of something that, like, uh, Control would do. Uh, the video game Control. Let's cross it together. Look at that. And this warlock is wielding, like, a staff, and then all of a sudden he's become all, uh, fragmented. Look at that. Yeah, and even the enemies are like that. So yeah, a whole new elemental type is what they're saying. So guns will harness this, you know, just like arc, void, solar. Grenades even, right? See that? See that? I'll try to pause it. Right here. See that? That white ball right here? Looks like a, a grenade of some sort. Look at that. Ice. Hatchets. That's going to look incredibly gorgeous. I like the idea of the warlocks. You know, they have a staff like a mage, you know? Like, that's such a cool effect. Yeah, this is going to look insane, like, visually. Look at that. I want to catch... Yeah, there we go. Okay, so what? what is this right here? Like, what's the Titan doing? Is it like getting, like, a big icicle shield thing to bash people with? I don't know. That I don't, I don't know about that. But, yeah, the Warlock looks cool. And then, like, sort of these axes... Type thing for the hunter. That's really cool. I will give these guardians the and so this is the, the fallen we're learning about there. Okay. Man, 
and they showed off uh, some other stuff there. Currently supported platforms on September 22nd this year, and it kicks off a new era in Destiny. Where what was this? We offer any of those threads coming home to roost this summer. The season of Rivals. Hmm. And we'll check this out since we got some couple more minutes. This is what's happening now. And with allies like Rasputin, who can stop us? This is the new season. Just recapping. From Titan to Mercury, their shadow reaches. Is their message a warning? A trick? We can't know until we hear their words for ourselves. So on IO. We can't on Mars. So much like how the Taken showed up during the Taken King and Destiny and they just sort of invaded the game. Uh no, this is another big world event. Now this is interesting. They've got like machines or something here. It's IO. Whatever the hell that is. Shrieker. You will not need them. New sword. We New guns. The, the darkness reached out, but something interferes. The witch sister of the Taken King, Savathun. Savathun. New dungeon. New public event. We are the final line that holds the second collapse. Look at this. Let's let's go back. Let's look at the beauty of this weapon right now. Final line that holds the second collapse. Looks like a look at that. One of those single shot grenade launchers. But it looks like it's got that white, taken, glowy stuff. Oh, and the new gun. Check out this other. Road to Ruin Exotic Quest. So like I said, there's going to be a new... I, I predicted this as well. New exotic to chase, right? So avoid trace rifle here. Uh, looks like it's made of some sort of rock or mineral. You know, and it's got sort of this... I don't know, this, like, gl glow to it. Like a Taken glow. Prepare yourself, Guardian. This battle is not over. Just, yeah, and a new sword. And that looks cool. So, Season of Arrivals. A lot of hype. E even for right now, even for the future. I mean, it's it's really good to be hyped about September and seeing them uh, showing off new content and stuff like that. Um, this is big. It's good stuff. And finally seeing the stranger return a, a key character from Destiny 1 that's just been non-existent for such a long time. Wow. So, a lot to be excited about. Just incredible. I was expecting to be hyped and and they they delivered. They absolutely delivered. So, uh, we'll, we'll be live with some Destiny 2 here in just a minute. Uh, you know, they'll probably be launching. It may not be immediate here, you know. There might be a lot of people trying to log into the game right now. So, we'll, we'll see how that goes. And uh, we'll hit the tower, see what's going on.
like Shadow Keep was really cool because it was a big turning point for the game. It was really them announcing that they're embracing the MMO stuff. You know, the finishers came out. We had new guns. We had seasonal exotics. You know, loot to chase. New dungeon. You know, uh, an interesting direction in the story. Returning to an old destination, the moon, which was a a very creepy, dark, and treasured place in Destiny One. You know, it was because Destiny One was a really dark game. It was it was not a lot of bright, happy, cheery stuff. I mean, it was like, you know, the moon was a scary, dark planet. Like it was like live the moon to me was like the movie Alien, like xenomorphs, like very much all the caves and stuff had that kind of architecture of the hive and stuff like that. And it, it just had that creepy look like you were in one of the alien movies and you're a colonial marine, stuff like that. And so it was, it was creepy and it was scary and your ghost was the, you know, your only light was the flashlight from the ghost illuminating, you know, the slimy caves of, that the hive were squirming through, you know, just absolutely insane. So there's a lot of things that Shadow Keep did right, uh, but the seasonal stuff that came after, I feel, was not so great. A lot of choices that were made around season passes and stuff like that. Yeah, I figured there's going to be some server issues. There's going to be a lot of people hyped. A lot of people that haven't uh, been on in a while uh, will be logging in, wanting to get in on the new stuff. So, I'm good. Was supposed to go camping again, but the winds are too rough for the camper. Okay, right on. Understandable. Well, I'm glad you're getting to go out and do stuff like that. That's that's actually really cool. Yeah, there was a lot of stuff. Uh, I I just remember the hype for Shadowkeep was real, and it they delivered, and the hype now is just it's that same feeling that just kind of and and the fact that they're finally embracing the destiny 1 legacy content and bringing some of that back that's good yeah you got a lot of wild out there yeah it's it's nice that you can get out and kind of you know disconnect from all this stuff uh, that's going on cuz it's all it's all pretty overwhelming whether it's you know whether it's current events or it's the pandemic it's you know all these different things we kind of need that uh, perspective to uh, disconnect from the world a little bit and uh, connecting with nature is not to be underestimated I I very much miss that kind of stuff so we'll see what I'm doing this summer maybe I can get out a little more than we did last year it felt like last year was just relentless Yeah, it's good to go hiking. I, I usually like to go hiking and do some photography. Scenic photography is among my favorite uh, types of photography. I prefer that. Wildlife, nature. Because, uh, man, I hate photographing people. They're just so annoying. You know, you're like, stand there. Look at the camera. Don't, don't close your eyes. Smile. You know, like so difficult so when I have to do event photography whether it's weddings or luncheons and gatherings and you know portraits and whatever I just I hate it Carl bot created the starboard channel I've never I have no idea why why that would happen that's really strange
a sentient bot. Yeah, pretty much. Like, I don't understand why you would do that. But he didn't do it in my Discord, so... A lot to be excited about. Uh, here's another big thing I did today. Picked up some uh, key lights. So, kind of. Show you guys that. In case some of you might not know what I'm talking about here, but the. Ogato key light is going to be a lot cooler than the two softbox lights that I have here. So the idea is to do that. They'll be clamped uh, to the desk. So that'll be nice. Uh, and they're adjustable, color, brightness, stuff like that. So I think we're going to notice a big, uh, a big change there. And of course the ability to adjust the height and direction, stuff like that. Um, whereas softbox lighting is, is very hard to, uh, adjust the angles and it can be incredibly infuriating, but yeah, being able to tweak the temperature is going to be nice. Uh, that way you can see a more true image, a more in focus image, less grainy, probably even, um, of course it's got stream deck integration. Uh, whether it's turning it on or changing the temperature, having different, you know, presets for that. So yeah, video, video production is going to go up. So I picked up two of these, and these are very, very expensive. They are not cheap. Um, but I also think that's going to make it cooler in here. So no, it does not do color per se. It 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 does you can do the temperature of the light. So it could be very white, bluish, or it could be very yellow, you know, and sort of natural uh, light. Yeah, so color temp. And then, of course, we can do the brightness on that as well. Yeah. Aiden knows all about lighting. Um, so, yeah, the, the softbox lights, very hot, very big, not as adjustable. Uh, I'm hoping that can, because I know when I turn off all the lights in here, I mean, it d it drops at least five degrees in temperature. Like, there's at least that much of a change when I'm playing games in the dark, especially at night when it's like 80 degrees. Like, right now, it's a comfortable 70 in here, even with this on, but it's still, you know, it just feels hot. And I have the fan on high, like, constantly throughout the summer. So I'm hoping this is going to help us in the summer, you know, with regards to, you know, video production and stuff like that. Hopefully we'll be able to, to uh, stream. Servers are not available. Um, hopefully we'll be able to stream. Not necessarily more, I guess, but... Yeah, so now we're out of the queue. Whatever the queue thing uh, going on was, uh, that's... Because it had me in a queue a second ago, and now it's... So we'll see. Yeah. Yeah, and I... You know, I saw that other companies are making key lights and stuff, but I think I want to go with Elgato, because, you know, the feature-rich stuff, the ease of use, um, stuff like that, I think that's going to be better. And I'll, I'll be able to tweak some camera settings here, too, on the Sony a6000, so that'll be nice. Um, so I think there will be a pretty noticeable difference. These two uh, softbox lamps cost about 90 bucks total, which was good. Because you got two stands, you got two softbox lights, you got the bulbs, uh, all that together. And that was a deal. That, that was a freaking steal. Um, whereas these key lights are about 250 I think, a pop. Yeah, so the key light's very expensive. Yeah, and before this, Spaden, before this, I literally bought lamps from, like, Walmart. <laughs> Just, like, 
floor lamps that were a pole, you know, with three bulbs on it. And you could tilt the bulbs in different positions. And so I'd, I'd be pointing them at the wall so that the light would bounce off the wall and light me. Because if I pointed them directly at me, if I pointed the bulbs directly at me, it would transmit heat. It would also wash me out. It would make me look incredibly white. And then I would just disappear, you know. I would just... You know, you know what happens when there's too much light in the scene and it gets washed out. But yeah. <laughs> L Train, how's it going, buddy? Welcome. Welcome to the stream. Yeah, bouncing light. Yeah, so very much because I have white walls. I even bought reflectors. I was going to get crazy with that just in case I had to. I bought some. Bought some of those panels and stuff and diffusers and whatnot. Um, so yeah, I had all that. Yeah, I learned a whole lot about it because with the green screen, you have to have lighting uh, behind you for the screen, for your shadow uh, casting on it. And you have to have lighting sources in front of you that illuminate you and the green screen so that there's, you know, a difference there and that the camera can sort out what part is you and what part is the green screen and what needs to be filtered out, essentially. Yeah, so... Green screen stuff is uh, infuriating. But we learned, and I believe it's quality stream because of that, uh, from what we've learned. So that's good. So yeah, we'll hang out here. Let me, let me take it over to uh, the intermission screen here. We'll, we'll chill here. And I'll just, I'll let you guys know when we're, when we're live here. So it's 10 minutes in, they've been up for 10 minutes, and obviously, you know, the servers are going to be crammed. So I don't know. We'll, we'll see how things go. 